Hi, I'm Connor from Connor.engineer and today I'm going to go on through how to draw threads for 3D printing in SolidWorks. Uh, so we can see the finished models here. So we have a body and a cap. So you can see the threads on the cap and the design and the knurling and stuff. I just have my, my, my initials on it there as well. And you can see the threads on the inside of the, the body um, and these two pieces screw together uh, then to form one box. Um, so that's the finished piece there together. Um, so you can see the treads are nice and they fit well together fairly well. Um, so I'm going to be going through how to do this in SolidWorks and how to work out the different tolerances and stuff. Uh, so we'll go over to SolidWorks now and I'll step through that. Okay, so I've opened a new part here in SolidWorks. Um, the first part that we're going to draw is the main body of the box uh, that the cap will thread into. And then we'll move on to the cap. Um, obviously, if you don't want to design your own parts in SolidWorks, all the files are available on Thingiverse um, for you to download and print on your own printer. But it's kind of good to understand the design of something like this so that you can go and put your own threads into your own objects uh, and have your own kind of design freedom over your projects. Um, so we're going to open a new sketch here on the top plane. Uh, and I want to create a circular box. Um, that's uh, 50 mil in diameter. Uh, these sizes are just kind of sizes that I picked to create a print that wouldn't take too long to print. Uh, the print takes about three hours in total on my uh, Anet A8 printer, um, but I'll talk about that more later on. Uh, so we're going to extrude up this to create a cylinder that's 50 mil high. So now we have the, the kind of main shape of the body created. Uh, so I want to shell this uh, so that we have uh, a hollow inside and I want the diameter to be uh, four mil. So just pick this off pop top surface because if you don't pick a surface it'll just shell the inside and we want an open top. Uh, so now you can see that we have the inside is hollow and we have the top section here. Um, so I'm just going to put some fillets on this now. Um, so I'm going to put a 5 mil fillet in the bottom and of the internal and the external sides uh, just to make it look a bit nicer. And I'm going to put a 2 mil fillet on the inside and a 1 mil fillet on the outside. Um, I could have put a 2 mil fillet on both sides, but I wanted to have a top, a flat top surface uh, for the cap to meet the body. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about that later on. Uh, so this is the shape of your uh, main body piece. Um, so we need to draw the cap next, um, and then cut out the shape of the cap of the threads into the body, so that you may have matching threads with the threads on the cap but it's easier to draw the external threads than to try and draw the internal threads in here. So we'll move on to that next. Okay, so I've created another new part in SolidWorks. Um, so we're gonna create another sketch on the top plane here again. And we're gonna draw a circle of diameter 40 point, sorry, uh, 40.8. Uh, just to explain where this measurement came from, if we look back at our main body, uh, you can see the internal diameter of this is 42 mil. So why I picked 40.8 is I wanted to have a point, 0 0.6 mil gap the whole way around between the cap and the body just to make sure there was good clearance because uh, I wanted the good contact between the threads and I didn't want the cap and the body to be interfering with each other. Uh, without the threads. Uh, so if you take 0.6 mil away twice from 42, you get 40.8. That's where that measure measurement has come from. Uh, so if we extrude this up 15 mil. So the threads are going to be between here and here in this 15 mil section. So this means that the cap is going to go into the body 15 mil. And that gives you a good amount of space to put a good few uh, revolves of threads on it. So now we're going to create the section for you to hold the cap in your hand. So we'll create another circle on top of this. 
and the diameter of this circle needs to match the external diameter of the body. So that was 50 mil. And we're going to extrude this up 20 mil. So between here and here is where you're going to hold the part in your hand. So this kind of gives you a good amount of space to hold the cap in your between your fingers without using up too much space. So the next thing we need to do is put some fillets on it just to make it, to smooth it out and make it easy to hold and to make, put a nice feel on it. So I am going to put a two mil fillet between the, the upper and the lower part. So if you remember from the body, we put a two mil fillet here. So that will match that. Um, so the other fillets I'm going to put on it are uh, five mil fillet on the top. Two mil fillet on the bottom. And a one mil fillet on the final edge. Um, I could use a larger fillet here, uh, but again, I want a flat surface to meet a flat surface between the cap and the body. So this is our main body, our cap shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some uh, grip on the around the side. So if we look down at the top of the part, um, I'm going to draw a new sketch on the top of the part. I'm going to get a center line from the origin to the outer circle. I'm going to come down here and start drawing the shape of the, the grip. So Uh, we're going to just come out a bit larger just to get that uh, those pieces to line up. So um, this will be four mil, and we want the midpoint of this to line up with this point. Won't be a coincident. Uh, I'm going to draw a construction circle or a construction point, um, just because I'm going to do a spline now. But uh, we'll need some guidance of 1.2 mil. Uh, these measurements I worked out from just playing around with the the different sizes and how it looked. And these were kind of good measurements that I felt for my size of box. Uh, if you draw a different size, the, do, the measurements will have to be different. But just play around with the different measurements. It's the same with the fillets. You just kind of play around with it until you get a good a good look and then uh, something that you think will feel good um, for the user. So we're going to draw, draw a spline between these three points. Just like that. Escape to exit and now you have your kind of cut shape. So I'm going to cut this the whole way through the part. Um, so now you can kind of see what I'm, I'm starting to go for. So now I want to put a fillet uh, all around this to kind of smooth it out and get rid of the sharp edges. Um, so I'll go for a two mil fillet. Now, uh, instead of me having to draw all of these parts uh, or all of these cuts, I'm just going to draw it once and uh, do it in a circuit or pattern around the center. Um, but this, I need to draw an axis for this to work. So because I started this drawing over the origin in the middle of it, uh, you can just prick the front plane and the right plane to draw your axis, and that will give you an axis through the middle of your part. Uh, this is why it's very important to pick uh, where you put your origin at the start of your drawing. So now I want to create a circular pattern um, around this axis. And the features I want are this fillet and this cut. Okay. So I suppose if we kind of look from it from the top, we'll get a good idea of what's going on. 
Um, so yeah, I've drawn this before, so this is why the settings are saved. Um, uh, you need to have equal spacing and around 360 degrees. And then you kind of just pick a number of, of um, grips that look good on your, uh, your part. So I picked 16. So if I just accept that. And you can see I have my, my grips all the way around my, my part. Now I'm going to hide this axis. Um, just I usually do that. I hide my axes and my, plane, my reference planes when I'm finished with them. Uh, just so I can always see what's going on with the part. So the next thing we need to move on to is the threading of the cap. Okay, so we're going to start drawing our threads on this part now. Uh, so I'm going to open a sketch on the front plane of this part. And I'm going to go perpendicular to that. If you're wondering how I'm getting this menu up, I'm just pressing space, and that will bring up the orientation menu, and you can change what orientations you're looking at. Uh, but normal too will bring you normal to the plane that you're working on. So I'm going to start by drawing a line over here. That is uh, vertical. And I want to add a relationship to this line. Uh, so I want this line to be collinear with this outside line. So they, if they were to continue on, they would pass each other and be, uh, and be on the same line. Um, so now I'm going to start to dimension this. So I want this line to be 15.2 mil above the base of this. This is because uh, from here to here is 15 mil and I want this to start one layer above this which is 0 0.2. All my layers on my printer are 0 0.2 mil uh, and this line is going to be 2 mil tall. Okay, so now I need to draw a center line starts at the midpoint of this line and comes out horizontally for 2.2 mil. And now I want a line to come out at the top of that center line for half a mil. And finally I'm going to join this and this. Now I need to mirror this, so the entity is to mirror is this line and this line, and I want to mirror them about that center line, and that will just match it. It just saves me having to draw the other side of this. Um, so you may be wondering what this shape is and how the how the dimensions were got. So this is two point two mil because if we take away point six, which if you remember is our gap. That gives you 1.6 mil, so that means it'll go 1.6 mil into the part. Uh, for 3D printing on my printer, all key dimensions have to be done in multiples of 0.4. So that means you'll get four steps on that, which means it'll be kind of a strong piece. And that'll be what will be inside the, uh, the, the body of the piece. So I just thought that would be a good size. Um, this is one mil and this is two mil, so you just you get this sloping trapezoid shape. All threads are kind of done in trapezoids or triangles, more prominently trapezoids because it's a stronger thread. Uh, so that's your profile of your thread and the reasons why it was done. So now we need to draw a plane. Um, so I'm going to exit from this sketch uh, because I'm not ready to use this sketch, but I need it for the next step, which is to draw a plane, a uh, reference plane. So I need a plane to be parallel to either the top surface or any, s any horizontal surface in the part. So parallel. And my second reference is going to be the midpoint on this line. And that needs to be coincident to that. So this is a reference plane. You can draw on reference planes because uh, you have to draw on a plane. You can't just draw in midair. So I'm going to open a sketch on top of this and I'm going to go normal to this plane. It doesn't matter what way it's turned as long as we can see the sketch and the origin. Uh, so I need to draw a circle on this plane that 
will match up with the external diameter or the, the external point on that sketch. So we're just going to dimension this just to make sure that that's correct. It should be 40.8 mil because it should match our external uh, external diameter of this. So now we're going to use this circle to create a helix, which is kind of like a spiral, to go spiral down along this. Um, and then we're going to sweep this profile along the spiral. Sweep basically means you drag a profile along a line and it creates a solid body doing that. So we need to go into curves, helix and spiral. And now we need to put in our settings. Uh, so the thread will follow this line. Um, so I'm going to use height and revolution because it's the easiest way to figure out uh, what you want to do with your uh, with your threads because working on pitch is, is kind of painful. Um, so I'm going to go for 13 mil and three revolutions. So three revolutions kind of gives you a good bit of space between your threads, which gives a good strength to the part. You're not taking out too much material out of the other part. Uh, where I got 13 mil from is, you can see the part there, and you can see it down here. So if you come down 13 mil, um, you get, there's enough space here uh, for the the profile to come down um, so you just kind of need to play around with this uh, when you're drawing this you need to make sure that your start angle matches up with the profile of your sketch otherwise uh, it won't work because your profile has to be at the start of your spire at your helix you also need to make sure that this is is counterclockwise helix uh, when I first drew this I clicked a helix uh, a clockwise helix um, and I printed it out and everything, but the thread was backwards, so it was opposite to the conventional uh, way to turn a thread to turn a cap, um, which was kind of annoying when I did it. But it's kind of a learning lesson, so make sure that's counterclockwise. That's very important. Okay, so you can see now that we have our profile and we have our helix spiral. So now we need to do a sweep. Sweep boss base. So we select our profile, which is this sketch, and then we select our helix, and you can see that it has created the thread. So we can accept that. So you can see that the thread comes down out of the cap and finishes down here, which is what we want. We're going to hide the helix again just for ease of use, and we're going to hide my reference plane. Okay, so now we just want to do some chamfering just to make sure that this part screws in easily. So I'm going to open up chamfer here and come around to my the end of my part. And I'm going to do an 11 mil, uh, 10 degree chamfer on this shape, on this surface. And I'm going to just flip the direction. And that'll just make it easier to put the, uh, the thread into the, uh, into the body. Uh, you, again, you can work out these kind of settings just by playing it around, playing around with the uh, the settings. So now I need another chamfer on these two edges, and I'm going to go with a one mil, forty-five degree chamfer. And this gives us this nice clean shape that that'll be very easy to screw in. And uh, now I need to fill at this edge because these uh, this is too sharp of an edge for 3D printing. So I'm going to put a one mil fillet on this edge. And that gives us a very good, a very good shape for putting in the thread and for, for it kind of suits the 3D printer as well. So finally, to just finish up this thread, I'm just going to put a 0 0.2 mil fillet on both the top edge and the bottom edge of this thread. You'll very rarely see a thread with a, a very sharp edge like that. Um, in fact, most products won't have sharp edges like that. Um, so this is our cap piece finished. So the next stage of this design process is to 
cut the threads out of this uh, piece, out of this body. However, if we were to just cut this out of the other piece, um, it would be an exact match and it would fit in SolidWorks, but if you want to print it, there's no way it would possibly fit together. So what we're going to do is we're going to offset this thread by a set amount and cut that out of the, uh, the body just to give a good gap. So we'll do that next. Okay, so what I've done here is I've used Save As to create a new part called Cap Combine, which is this, it's essentially a copy of our cap design that we've just finished. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to delete uh, the fillets and chamfers that we added to the threads uh, to make them uh, work better. Um, and now we're going to edit the profile that we used for the sweep of the thread. Uh, so we're just going to come normal to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the the lines of the profile uh, for construction. So what this means is that SolidWorks will ignore these lines um, because uh, you're only using them to create the lines you actually want to use in the drawing. So now that that's done, we're going to offset these lines uh, by 20 mil, or sorry, by 0 0.2 mil. And so what this is going to do is this is going to create the tolerance between the uh, the thread and the body. So I tried a few different test prints and 0 0.2 gave a tight fitting thread um, that worked well. Um, I know I said you have to work in 0 0.4s, but I tried this and it worked really well. It just, when the print comes off the printer first, you have to uh, work it through a few times to get the thread to work properly. But after that, the thread is perfect um, and I've had the current version of that I'm using for a while now and been playing with it and it, it's perfectly fine. So now that we have that done, uh, we're going to exit the sketch and that will have created a larger thread. So the other thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to edit the helix and spiral that we created for the threads. So I'm going to change this to pitch and revolution. So SOLIDWORKS has automatically worked out from the height that we've given it before, the pitch of the thread, um, whereas initially it's very difficult to work out the pitch. Um, so what we are going to do is I want to extend on this, tr this helix by half a revolution. What this does is it gives uh, the thread a bit of play so that if you over tighten it, uh, the thread won't get jammed in against the edge, uh, the end of the thread and get stuck. That happened with one of the previous models I had. Um, so this, this gives it a, a huge amount of space to tighten down um, and it won't uh, get stuck. So we'll just finish that and this is now the part that we're going to use to combine uh, with the uh, main body to create the thread. Okay, so I've reopened my main body here and we can finish the design of this part uh, by cutting out the, uh, the cap that we made to cut out of this part. And that'll, be, that'll finish up the design for this. What we need to do is come to insert and insert a part. Um, so I'm just going to find my, my part here. Sorry. Uh, so cap combine. Um, and that will bring this part into um, the main body. It doesn't create an assembly. It just kind of inserts an, another body into this part. Um, the important thing to note here is that you need to make sure that you've uh, selected locate part with move copy feature. Uh, what this will do, this will allow you to mate uh, this part to this part after it's been inserted into the into the actual part itself. Um, so we're just going to click to drop this in here, and now it's opened up the locate locate part uh, dialog here. So we're going to add some mates to this this part to mate this to this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we want to just to help uh, line up the parts is we're going to mate uh, this end surface of the thread uh, to the front plane of this part. So, and we're going to add that. Uh, don't click tick because uh, we're uh, make sure you just click add because that will close the locate part menu. Um, and we're not ready for that yet. Uh, so the next mate we need to do is we need to mate the um, surface of this cap, this part here, 
to the internal surface of this uh, concentric or concentrically um, so that they're in line with each other. So we add that. Uh, now we need to mate uh, the, top, the flat top surface of the body with one of these flat surfaces on the cap. And now you can see that the cap and the body uh, should be lined up properly. So we can close this. And now we have the uh, body and the cap with the offset threads put in. So now we're going to do a combine to cut this part, this body, out of this body. So we come up to insert, features, combine. And we're going to do a subtract. So the main body is the part that you want to leave behind afterwards or cut out of. So that's this part here. And the body to subtract is this part here. So you can see that that's going to cut the threads out of uh, the main body. We click OK here. And now you can see that we have the threads cut into the, the body of the piece. So that's this part finished now. OK, so I've just made an assembly here of the cap, the actual cap, not the offset cap, and the body, uh, just so we can sanity check our design. Um, so I performed the same mates that we did with the combined cap and the body previously, but instead of instead of uh, mating the end of the thread with the front plane, I've mated the two front planes of this part and this part. So we're just going to do uh, a section here across the front plane, and we're going to look at the front plane. Okay. So we can see the threads here, that there is a decent gap between the actual thread and the, the, the body, and that none of them are touching, and that that looks like it should work properly. Um, it's just, it's important to check that your threads actually mesh, especially when you want to 3D print them, because they have to actually work. Uh, so this design should be ready for printing now. Okay, so I saved the cap and the body as STLs in SOLIDWORKS. It's a simple just save as to STL. And I've imported them into my slicer here. I'm using the Cura slicer in OctoPrint because OctoPrint is what I use to manage my 3D printer. So when you import them, they'll probably be in the wrong orientation. So you just need to orientate them properly. Um, the cap, uh, we're going to print upside down just because there's detail on the bottom of it. Uh, what I did after you left the tutorial was I added just my initials to the uh, the model. Uh, and I'm just going to line them up where I usually print stuff on my bed. Um, and that should be ready to go. Uh, I've This is just the profile of my printer. Just a quick overview. I use 200 degree nozzle head, 50 degree bed. Uh, there's 0 0.2 layer heights. Uh, fill density is 20. I kind of want this to be a strong part. Uh, normally, I'd use less than that. Uh, 1.2 shell thickness, 30 millimeters per second print speed. Um, and that's mainly it. And then you can slice out the part then. OK, so I'm just going to play a time lapse here. So uh, my printer produces a time lapse because uh, I have a webcam to monitor the print as it prints the, uh, the file. So I'm going to just watch through the time lapse here. You can see the cap is on this side and the uh, main body is on the other side. You'll start to see the threads coming up on the cap there now, over here this, on this side. Uh, the printer is uh, an ANET A8. Uh, it was about 200 euro, including shipping, uh, from Sandsmart. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to have a look at the printer. Uh, it's a fairly good printer, but it takes a good while to uh, get it set up and configured to work properly.
uh, but it's well worth it. It's a good, it's a good cheap printer, a good kit printer in my opinion. So you can you can definitely see the threads at this point. So it's finished printing the cap and it is now uh, printing the body. Uh, this print took about three hours to finish on my printer. Okay, so this is my printer. Uh, I just had to throw in some quick footage of it. Uh, so here is the hot end and my heat bed. Um, this is the webcam that I use for my time lapses and for monitoring prints remotely. Um, I have some tools held up at the sides. Uh, there's the controller. Um, the screen. Um, the whole thing is controlled by a Raspberry Pi down the side there. Um, and I just have blue tape on the bed for adhesion. Okay, so at the end of all that we have our final uh, finished piece. Um, so with the two parts and the threads. Uh, when you first take it off the printer, uh, you'll have to run the threads into the part and back out a good few times just to break off any loose pieces, any uh, swore for stray bits of filament um, just to get them, them fitting well but as you can see it, it goes in and out very well uh, and it's very easy to use um, so there's kind of the inside and I've kind of cleaned it up a bit um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, let me know what you think of it uh, if you want me to do more let me know um, I'm used to writing more kind of uh, blog style tutorials uh, but if you like this I can give this a go more um, so yeah, there's tons of uh, articles and blogs available on Connor.engineer uh, with lots of different 3D printing and electronics projects. Uh, so thanks for, I suppose, making it through this video and hopefully we'll see you around again. Okay, bye.